So in my last video, I demonstrated the use of Visual Studio Code to debug a Java EE application running in Wildfly. In that video, I downloaded Wildfly and configured the necessary VS Code plugins. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use VS Code remote containers to streamline developer setup and ensure a consistent developer experience. So let's start with the end in mind. Imagine you have a developer that's ramping up on your project. All that is required is that they install, install Visual Studio Code and Docker. Docker is used by the Visual Studio Code remote containers extension, and so we need to have that on the system as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch Visual Studio Code. And I'm gonna show you that I went ahead and removed all the extensions just to reinforce the point that this is a clean installation of Visual Studio Code. I'm gonna go ahead and follow these prompts to go ahead and install the remote containers plugin. Now that that's installed, I'm gonna go ahead and open up my project. So let's go in the project, videos, example. And the first thing you're gonna see here is this prompt that asks if it, it's gonna detect that there are dev containers and ask me if I want to reopen it in that container. So I'm going to go ahead and follow that prompt to reopen it in a container. The first time it does this, it takes a little while to build the, the container image the first time. It'll be much quicker on subsequent uh, loads of the project. Okay, so once the container, the dev container is built, it will open up the project. And you'll see the project already has all the configuration of the extensions uh, all the extensions rather installed that I need in order to work on this project. That includes the Java extensions, uh, my server connector extension for managing my Wildfly instance. Uh, so you can see that I can actually go ahead and add uh, a new server. Now this will be the local file system in the container. And I'll go ahead and add that. And I can also go ahead and use my Maven extension to go ahead and package the project. Now you'll see that uh, I didn't have to install any other tooling. I just had to have VS Code and Docker. And as a developer, I don't have to worry about taking care of Maven, uh, what version of Java, all of that's represented in the dev container. And I can go ahead and start my server. And you'll see the first time it, it sees a port being used, it's gonna go ahead and forward that port and give you an option to go ahead and open it in a browser, which I'll do. And there's my Wildfly server. And I can go ahead and add my deployment as well. Uh, let's go in here. And we'll see our application go ahead and deploy once I do a full publish. And with the application deployed, I can go back to my browser and browse to my application. So how did we do all of this? Uh, the rest of this video is going to show you how you set up a project to use dev containers and how you can go ahead and configure it to include Wildfly and to include the necessary extensions to have this developer experience. So I've gone ahead and checked the project out again and, and made sure that we didn't have any traces of Visual Studio Code configuration or dev containers in the project. You can see here it's just the source. It's a standard Maven project taken straight from the Git repository. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up in Visual Studio Code. Uh, before I do, I'm going to show you that the only extension that I have installed at this point in time is the remote containers extension. Again, you'll be prompted for that when Visual Studio Code launches and detects that you have Docker installed, it will ask you if you want to install that extension and go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and open our project folder. And unlike uh, earlier in the video, uh, because we do not have the dev container yet uh, configured for this project, uh, it's, gonna, it's not gonna prompt me to, to reopen it in a remote container. But what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and add a dev container configuration to it. Uh, I'm going to ignore the prompt here to install the extension pack 
just yet because I think we want to go ahead and do that once we have our remote container. So we're going to go to our command palette and because I had recently used this uh, earlier in the video, it's here at the top, but you want to go ahead and select remote containers, add development container configuration. And you can search this for different configurations depending on your needs. In this case, I want the Java. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. Uh, I'm going to pick the defaults here. Uh, it's going to also install Node because many times you're developing web apps, you need Node as well. I'm going to go ahead and tell it to install Maven. And then it gives you some options to install some additional tooling. Uh, I'm not going to do that at this time. And what that's going to do is it, it creates the dev container uh, JSON, which is a configuration file that's under a hidden folder called dev container. You would want to check this into your project. It's also going to create a Docker file that is used to construct the dev container. So we're going to go ahead and uh, let it build that and reopen it in a dev container. So with the remote containers, this little uh, status bar item down here on the bottom left is where you're going to get after some of the remote container commands. And it's also going to give you an indicator as to what whether or not you're in a remote container or whether you're developing locally. So I'm going to go ahead and click this and pick reopen in container. And just as you have seen before, the first time it's going to go ahead and ask you if you want to build a container or in this case rebuild it because the Docker image still exists on my system. And you'll see that it went ahead and did that. And now I'm actually running it inside the Java dev container. You're also going to see that uh, because that dev container already defines uh, the Maven installs the Maven and installs uh, Java, but it also defines um, some common extensions that people want when developing in Java. So those extensions are already installed and we're ready to go. But we're missing two things for what we want to do. The first thing we're missing is Wildfly. We want to be able to, this Java application is a Java EE app, and we want to be able to deploy it to a Wildfly container and run it. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and modify our container here to add Wildfly. So let's go ahead and modify this Docker file and let's add Wildfly. So this Docker add command is going to pull down the Wildfly distribution to the temp folder. And then this run command is going to go ahead and create a Wildfly folder off of root in the container. And it's going to extract that that archive to that folder and then we're going to set the permissions when when running inside the container uh, you're running as this VS code user and so we want to make sure those permissions are correct so we're going to go ahead and save that and then we're going to ask this to go ahead and rebuild the container so you'll see it working down here you can click on this and you'll see the logs you can see that it's downloading the wildfly wildfly release and then you'll see all the other commands execute. And then there are a number of commands that act, execute after that to start the VS Code remote server. So now that we have Wildfly, we can actually jump down into a terminal. And these terminals are running inside your container. So you can see the file system inside the container. And we can see that we have this folder now and we have our installation. The other thing we're missing is our server connector plugin. I found that searching for Wildfly is a faster way to locate this extension. And I apologize for continuing to flip between extension and plugin. I mean extension. Uh, probably spent too much time in IntelliJ. Uh, so let's go ahead and install this. Now what we want to do is we want to install it into the dev container. Uh, the other thing you're going to want to do is you're going to click this and you want to want to copy the extension ID. The reason is is that while this is going to go ahead and install the extension, it's not going to remember that. It's not going to modify your dev container configuration. So we want to go back up here and we want to add that as an extension so that the next developer that opens this project, so that when we push it up to Git and someone else pulls it down, they'll get this extension automatically. So with that installed, you can see now that we have our our servers tab and we can go ahead and uh, add our Wildfly server 
Now note, this is of course the container file system, not our local file system. Escape again. And now we have our server configured as well. So let's go ahead and build our project. Number of dependencies have to be downloaded the first time. Now those, those are gonna be stored in the volume that's associated with this container. So as long as that sticks around, and there, it should unless you delete it, uh, in which case it'll have to rebuild that, that container again, uh, those things will be cached the next time and it'll be much faster. And, and sort of to prove that point, I'll go ahead and, well, obviously during this container's running instance, um, they're clearly there. But if I were to reopen this project and run Maven package again, it would be just as quick the next time around. So let's go ahead and add our deployment. And start our server. And again, you can see it detected port 8080. And so we can go ahead and open that up in a browser. And there's our Wildfly server. Um, I believe I have to do a full publish. Uh, you can see it says full publish required so that that deployment will uh, get pushed out. And you can see it's starting the deployment of that war. And now that it's done, we can go back here and browse to our application. Just as before, we can also restart this in debug mode. And you can see that we're now in debug mode. And we can go ahead and set our breakpoints just as before. And now we're debugging as well. So there you have it. We've taken a vanilla project and added a dev container and all the configuration necessary uh, to complete the developer experience. So if you want to learn more about remote containers and how they work, you'll want to go to the Visual Studio documentation and they explain exactly how these remote containers work. Uh, the short of it is, is that there, it's a Docker container that's running. Your source code is mounted via volume mount into the container. There's a VS code server process that's running inside the container. Uh, and your IDE essentially just becomes a sort of a thin client uh, for that remote server. Uh, so everything's sort of taking place inside the container. And in between uh, closing down Visual Studio code and reopening it again later, those volumes, your Docker volumes are saved as long as you don't delete them. If you do happen to delete them, it's not as though you lose your source code, but you might lose any additional configuration you did beyond the dev container configuration and you would have to rebuild the container again. So that's it. I hope you uh, enjoyed the video. And if you'd like to see more videos around Visual Studio Code and Java development, let me know in the comments below.